Excellent. Welcome, everybody. Good to see folks. And we're going to go ahead and start our event. As we're waiting for everyone to arrive, I encourage folks to share a few things in the chat if you would like. Um, first, we'd love to know where you're Zooming in from today. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and post these in our chat. So where are you Zooming in from? And what your Rossier program or degree or your um, your affiliation with Rossier. And then um, if you have been to campus in the past, I'd love to hear when the last time you were on campus was. And that will also, knowing this information can help us facilitate the networking part of our event as well. So for those who are joining, we're just asking you to go ahead and drop in the chat where you're Zooming in from, I'm here in San Diego, um, which is actually quite sunny out right now, um, which is a lovely change from the weather that we've been having lately. And then also, if you wanted to share your Rossier program, um, and then if you have been to campus recently, um, when's the last time you were there? For me, it was last Thursday. I was on campus for class. All right, how are we doing with um, participants, the waiting room? Do we have most people here with us? Yeah, I think we're good to go. We can go ahead and, and, uh, and get moving, get moving, and uh, I'll continue to monitor that waiting room and let folks in as they join us as well. Awesome. And I love seeing um, all of the greetings in the chat. Thanks everyone for doing that. Um, you're also welcome to rename your Zoom name. Um, so, um, for example, you could put your program and or your graduation year in your name, so it would appear next to your name, so you're welcome to do that as well. So we'll leave this up um, just for a little bit. And then once we feel like we have our forum here, Looks That's like great. there's one more people in the waiting room. Yeah, people from all over join us. Well, yeah, it's super exciting. Awesome. And all different programs as well, which is, I think, a testament to um, Rossier having just an amazing array of programs um, and people from all over the world. So welcome, everyone. So thank you all for coming today. We're so excited to be able to offer this event for the Rossier community and to be able to see so many of you on Zoom tonight. And I wanted to share a quick agenda so that you all know how we're going to approach the night. And um, as you can see, we have lots of learning and networking in store for you. Um, we're going to kick off with introductions and then um, do a 30-minute uh, panel with some of our esteemed panelist, and we're going to take a look at some questions that all of you submitted when you were registering. And then we'll have two rounds of breakout rooms. The first, which will be networking with each panelist. So each panelist will host a breakout room, um, and we'll go ahead and um, plug you into a room based on um, some of this information that you're giving us right now in the chat um, in terms of getting you connected. And then we'll have a second round, which will be open networking, and everyone will be put into a random group um, a bit smaller than the first round. And the goal is to help everybody who's here tonight get connected, get to know one another, and really do some networking across Rossier. And throughout the event, we'll be spinning a giveaway wheel and um, giving away gift cards during the event. So we've denoted in this agenda um, when those things will happen. So you have to be present to win. Um, you have to be on the Zoom call in order to win. So we'll hope you, we hope you'll stay with us throughout this whole event. Um, and now I'm gonna go ahead and hand it off to Tom to do introductions. Thank you very much, I appreciate that. I love the way that we have the, uh, the giveaway spread uh, towards the end of the events, right? A little incentive to keep everyone around uh, this evening. So we appreciate that. So thank you very much. 
Um, I just wanted to share uh, two quick uh, items uh, uh, before, uh, as we get started today. But my name is Tom Artiaga. I serve as the Director of Alumni Engagement. Uh, I've been at Ross here for almost seven months now, which is wonderful. It's been great. I've had a chance to meet a lot of our alumni, a lot of our students, and uh, I love this opportunity to uh, be a part of uh, an event that's bringing both uh, both of our uh, communities together. So, but just two things I wanted to, to share. First is a, a word of thanks. I want to thank our student volunteers that I've been working with to, to make this event uh, happen uh, tonight and, and thank all of our uh, alumni volunteers as well and all of our alumni panelists uh, that are joining us tonight. Uh, all of you, all of your work is really helping to create this supportive, powerful network uh, that we're all a part of. So I really appreciate you. And I also want to thank all of our guests, all, all of our, our this year tonight, you know, it's, we. I hope you enjoy tonight. Uh, I hope you. Uh, I hope you've also been able to enjoy maybe some of the other events we've had uh, in person and online uh, this this past um, you know several months. Here we've had our master class series. We've had homecoming. We've had the Melville lectures. Um, a lot of great programming that's been available in person as well as online. And we have a lot more events coming. Uh, uh, throughout this uh, next couple months as well. And what I'd love to do is actually have a list of all these upcoming events that I'm gonna drop in the chat. Um, and that way, um, anyone who would like to uh, attend some of these upcoming programs, let me drop that in the chat if I can. Sorry, let me just set up my chat properly. Thank you, there it is. And I'll also drop in our LinkedIn page as well for us here. So if anyone would like to uh, follow us on, on LinkedIn, that's a great way to also see what, what's coming up and what's going on um, at Ross here. So here's a PDF with upcoming events and programs that I dropped in there. And then also dropping our link to the uh, our LinkedIn page as well. Oh, there it is. Hold on. Appreciate the patience here. And there it is. Okay, and then the second thing I wanted to share was just an invitation. Sorry for the delay there. So the other thing was an invitation. So I wanted to, uh, very excited to share that we're going to be launching an alumni ambassador program. Um, and um, wanted to, you know, just encourage our alumni to think about if that's something you'd like to do as far as volunteer to serve our Ross here alumni community. Uh, you'll help us plan events, service events, uh, represent Ross here at, at college fairs, help us build our alumni network. And we'll have a lot more details uh, launching in our March uh, newsletter. Uh, which will be going out to invite all alumni to participate. But if you have any questions or you're interested in uh, participating uh, involved in our alumni ambassador mm -hmm. program, please feel free to reach out, you can email me directly. And then to our students uh, and, and our alumni as well, I want to invite all of you to be a part of our, uh, our, our exclusive networking and mentoring platform called the Rossier Career Network. And uh, this is a platform that's designed to help uh, make connections for our students and our alumni. The wonderful thing about this is that all of the alumni that are on this platform, they're there to help. They have, they've signed up, they said, hey, what can I do to help others? So it's, it's a really uh, nice group of folks to connect with. You can search by people by what their, um, their program was, what they're doing professionally. So I've dropped a link in there as well. So, and then speaking of our, our career network, I'm really happy to introduce uh, a new colleague, Ryan Alcantara is our new Rossier Career Service Manager. And Ryan, uh, has extensive experience in student affairs and career services, and really lucky to have his leadership um, in, in supporting our career development of our students and our alumni. So Brian, I'll hand it over to you to say hello and say a few words. Great. Thank you, Tom, and thank you, uh, Tamara and Bailey and uh, ROSC, as well as our panelists. It's a pleasure to be here with everybody today, and I'm very excited to learn more from our uh, distinguished alumni panel. Uh, I'm Ryan Alcantara, Career Services Manager at Rossier, um, and I, I just want to say uh, congratulations to all of you for taking time out of your very busy schedules to uh, spend an evening thinking about networking in your professional journey. At USC, we pride ourselves on our uh, Trojan family and the Trojan network, and it is indeed incredibly powerful, but you need to develop and cultivate those relationships. So throughout your time as a student, as well as an, as an alum. So be ready tonight to ask lots of questions, listen, and to meet some new friends, because that's what it's all about. As a little background on myself, I've been with Rossier uh, actually just about a month now, uh, but I've been part of the Trojan family for uh, 20 plus years. I earned my PhD in public administration and have taught over the years at Rossier as well as the Soul Price School of Public Policy. My professional experience is in higher education and I've worked in various segments of higher ed. 
Uh, I did send an introductory email out to our students, and I very much appreciated the warm welcome that I received from many of you. Uh, and I have enjoyed meeting with some of you. Career services at Rossier is in the midst of some changes, including integrating it with Rossier's um, student services. So very soon, I'll be launching a survey uh, on career services to our current students and encourage you to respond. Um, I'll also be updating the website and looking for various degree, um, I'm working with the various degree programs to be sure that we're providing exceptional career support to our students and alumni. In the meantime, if you have any questions or would like to meet, please don't hesitate reaching out to me. I will drop my email and LinkedIn in the chat, as well as a, a link to our Rossier Connect, which is where you find a job posting. So I'll put that all in the chat um, and I'll, I'll just put a quick plug in for our MAT students. I wanna make sure you're aware of the career workshops and career fair that's coming up at the end of March. And so if you've not heard about that, um, send me your email uh, in the chat and I will forward that email out to you all. But uh, again, enjoy the evening, take full advantage of the opportunity and now back to you tomorrow. Thank you so much. Um, it was awesome to hear from both of you and welcome to Rossier. We're so excited that you're here as resources for our students and our alumni. And uh, my name is Tamara Schatz. I'm a second year EDL student. Um, pursuing my EDD and a um, concentration in higher education. And currently I work at UC San Diego in the Division of Graduate Education and Postdoctoral Affairs. And I'm also a member of the Rossier Student Organization Council. I serve as professional development chair. And uh, Rossier Student Organization Council has been around since 1968. And it's a forum for the exchange of student ideas and also plan student activities for everyone at Rossier. So graduate students are all automatically members of the organization. And I'm very excited that many of my colleagues uh, in the Rossier student organization are here with us tonight. Um, so just a shout out to all of you. Thanks for being here, um, including Bailey uh, Schmidt, who's one of my um, colleagues and someone who helped plan this event. So Bailey, you're up next. There we go, you can hear me now. Um, thank you, Tamara, for that. Um, hi everyone, my name is Bailey Schmidt and I'm a current student in the PASA program, getting my master's. Um, this program is also known as Pet post-secondary administration and student affairs. Um, I currently work as a graduate assistant in the admissions center on USC's campus, along with serving on multiple leadership roles here at USC. Love my leadership. So um, one of those being RSSC, where I serve as our social programming chair. And with that being said, I'm super excited to be here today planning this event for you all. But before we start, I just wanted to give a huge shout out to my planning team, Tamara, Tom, and Ryan. We've all been working to get this all together, and I'm so excited that it's here. Um, along with that, I just wanted to also thank our amazing panelists in advance and all of our participants for coming out and supporting us in this event. Um, all said, let's get started with something that you've all been waiting for. The prizes. Uh, I was putting everyone's name in our little wheel that we're going to be doing. So please let me know if there's anyone who was missing after our first spin. Just um, feel free to message me on the side and let me know. If you did just join, I may have missed you. So just keep me posted. Um, just to let you all know, there'll be three opportunities to win prizes. And for those of you who win prizes, there'll be an option to choose either a $25 Starbucks gift card or a $25 Amazon gift card. Um, are we all ready to win some prizes? <laughs> awesome. All right. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Give me just a second. Make sure it's all ready for y'all. Okay. So if I can get a thumbs up that everyone can see it. We got you. We see it. Perfect. Awesome. All right. Let's get ready for the first winner. Congratulations, Kareem, one of my own PASA cohort mates. So we'll be in contact with you, Kareem. Um, thank you for attending. And thank you to everyone else for attending as well. 
All right. Well, without further ado, we are going to jump into our panel and meet our panelists. So hopefully you can see my screen. Thumbs up. Yes. It's all good. All right. Yes, we see you. Perfect. Thank you. So I'm going to read short panelist bios so all of you can get a glimpse into our amazing panelists. And Bailey is also going to share a link to the full bios for each of our panelists because they are all incredibly accomplished individuals. And we want to dive right into our questions, but we also want to make sure that all of you can see their full um, professional backgrounds and really um, get to know them a bit better. So Bailey will do that. And um, first we have Valencia Bell. Valencia is CEO and founder of two educational programs schools for scholars and cleared for scholar athletes. She has spent her career helping to shape young minds by opening up the possibilities of STEM careers in science, technology, engineering, and math. Valencia is one of six inaugural recipients worldwide of the prestigious 2021 Wharton Knowledge for Impact Awards from Penn's Wharton School of Business, as well as a scholarship recipient from Harvard University's Institute of Urban School Leaders. She has authored several books and her test prep expertise has been featured nationally and internationally, having served most recently as a featured speaker for the 2021 ACAN Conference for Alabama Possible. Valencia earned her undergraduate degree in biology and cognate studies from the University of Alabama. Additionally, she has earned a Bachelor of Science in Nursing from Virginia Commonwealth University, a Master of Family Studies and Systems Integration from the University of Maryland, and currently is completing a Doctor of Education in Organizational Change and Leadership from USC Rossier. Next is Dr. Corey Buckner, who is an Assistant Professor of Clinical Education for the Post-Secondary Administration and Student Affairs Master's Program in the USC Rossier School of Education. Dr. Buckner's expertise and interests are in the intercollegiate athletics, college student development, mindset development, and authentic mentorship for graduate students and early career student affairs practitioners. Prior to his full-time faculty appointment at USC Rossier, Dr. Buckner taught as an adjunct professor of clinical education in the PASA program and served as the assistant director of athletic academic support within USC's athletic department. Before coming to USC, Dr. Buckner served in advising personnel or advising personal and career development, as well as academic support leadership roles for student athletes at both the University of Louisville and Tennessee State University. He completed both his undergraduate and master's degrees at Indiana University Bloomington, where his master's degree was in higher education and student affairs. Dr. Buckner earned his doctorate in educational leadership with a concentration in higher education administration from USC Rossier. Next, we have Kwa Dao, who's a math and physics teacher at Menlo Atherton High in Atherton, California. He has served as the head coach for the Academic Decathlon and currently serves as the treasurer in the local teachers union. He earned his bachelor's degree from UC Berkeley in physics and astrophysics and received his master of arts in teaching from USC Rossier with a single subject teaching credential in math and physics. Kwa is also currently pursuing an MBA from UC Berkeley after he co-founded the Redwood Learning Collective, a tutoring cooperative focused on sliding scale tutoring and affordable educational support services that address curriculum harm and empower students to grow into the confident young adults rooted in their values. And finally, Dr. Brenda Lopez has successfully served in the role of teacher, af after school coordinator, dean of academics, dean of students, and dean of culture at the secondary level. She joined Magnolia Home Office Team in 2018 as the director of student services and currently serves as the chief external officer, where she oversees the community schools initiative across Magnolia Public Schools and was instrumental in receiving and now managing the $1.8 million grant for nine Magnolia school sites. 
Dr. Lopez is an education champion with over 16 years of experience working with students, families, educational leaders, and community partners. She co-created a leadership workshop for female students in Southeast Los Angeles, Girls, Leadership, and Mentoring, GLAM, which exposes female students in grades 5th through 12th to female leaders in the community. She also co-created Guiding Young Male Minds, or GYM, that aims to provide the same experience for male students. Dr. Lopez earned her bachelor's degree in history with a secondary teaching credential from Mount St. Mary's University and a master's degree in teaching of social studies from Teachers College, Columbia University. She earned her doctorate in educational leadership with a concentration in educational psychology from USC Rossier. Please join me in welcoming these four esteemed panelists. We're excited to hear more from each of you, and we thank you for taking time to be with us today. We will, as I mentioned, share links to their full bios uh, so that everyone can get to know them. And with that, we will go ahead and dive into our first question. So question number one is, tell us about your career pathway and how did you get from USC to where you are now? And what would you say would be two, one to two key milestones or inflection points of your journey? Um, and how about we get started with Hua? Hi, everybody. Uh, thanks for having me here. Uh, I, I think that um, for me, my career started when I worked as a paraprofessional, um, helping out other teachers in the Orange County Department of Education. And you know, I was really inspired to uh, become a teacher and you know, have my own classroom and create change. So I entered in the MAT uh, program at USC Rossier, um, really enjoyed my time here and uh, graduated in 2014. You know, during that time, I was also tutoring at six different tutoring companies to try to make <laughs> ends meet, uh, kind of crazy schedule. Um, but I had to kind of put that aside in order to do student teaching when it got to that point. And um, I think, you know, for me, after I graduated, uh, I was just really excited to, um, you know, not just teach, but also coach as well. I was a student in the academic decathlon team when I was uh, in high school. And that was something that really inspired me to kind of go into the teaching profession. Um, and so I ended up, you know, teaching um, in Orange County, where I had originally gone to school, um, and I was able to, to be a coach and even coach against my former coach. So it was kind of a really interesting um, pathway. And um, I think one inflection point, you know, or key milestone from that experience teaching Orange County was being able to win the county championship. Uh, we spent, I think at our max, we're spending like 40, 50 hours a week together, you know, me and my students, um, helping them learn and helping them prepare for the competition. They were just so happy to come in on Saturdays and Sundays and work hours and hours and hours every day. But it just really got to, to show me what the power of um, a good mentor can be. And for me, I also had really good mentors, um, especially early on in my career, uh, that really encouraged me to, to never give up, especially in my first year of teaching when it was really difficult. Um, so, you know, I've taught for the last nine years. Um, I moved to the Bay Area um, after a couple of years of teaching. And, you know, I've been uh, teaching at my current school for the last six years. Um, and I think my second key milestone was when um, I was teaching during distance learning and I recognized that some of my students had access to tutoring and pods and all this. And some of my students couldn't even find a quiet place to you know, get on the internet or even didn't have internet or a computer. And so I co-founded um, the Redwood Learning Collective as an opportunity to create like a pay what you can tutoring service. So the idea is if somebody can only pay $20 or even zero for tutoring, we still wanna welcome them in because we want to provide those tutoring services. And you know we have to do things on our side to 
make the magic happen. But for our students, you know, we, we take anybody who comes through our doors. Great, thank you so much for sharing. I One of the things you said, uh, the power of good mentors really stuck with me. And um, that's personally something that I am actually studying um, is, is graduate student mentoring and, and faculty student mentoring. So that's awesome. And uh, I look forward to talking with you more about that. Um, how about we have uh, Dr. Lopez go next? Hi, everyone. Thank you so much. I am in my vehicle, so I'm sorry if I'm making it work, how Tom says. So uh, if I cut off, just let me know. But um, so, yeah, I started with Magnolia Public Schools when I was a very ambitious first year history teacher in the San Fernando Valley. And uh, my goal was always to be a teacher ever since I was a kid. After the first year, I was like, maybe this is not my goal. Um, so I realized there was a lot of gaps in supporting um, new teachers and a lot of resources that we were missing and a lot of things that our teacher education program just didn't really prepare us for. But what I loved about Megley and why I've been with them um, now for 15 years is that they've continued to grow um, my capacity and really believe in um, just my natural ability to connect with others. And so uh, as a history teacher, I was tapped opportunity to then become an administrator uh, closer to where I grew up, which is, I grew up in Pico Rivera, which is about 15, 20 minutes from downtown LA. So I was able to then become an administrator on our Bell uh, campus in the city of Bell. And so in that experience, not only was I able to grow in leadership, but also um, understanding the assets and needs that every community brings um, and being able to really leverage partnerships. And through that, I just had a passion of continuing to empower families um, and students and building their leadership capacity as well. And so now uh, in my role, you know, slowly moving my way up in my role as chief external officer, I'm the only female in our chief, our C-level team uh, right now. And so really bringing in um, that experience and and being able to connect on different levels. I have a passion even right before starting this call, right, where um, we were talking about Hint Water and Opportunity. Um, I said, hey, I have a connection to Hint Water. <laughs> Do you guys need Hint Water uh, for a community event or anything like that? I'm always about sharing resources. I never hold on to anything myself. Um, so that's really, you know, what I've been passionate about uh, in terms of collaboration. So moving into uh, USC. So funny story about USC. I was supposed to go to USC for my master's and then Columbia was, <laughs> was an opportunity that popped up. So I was like, okay. And so then when I was able to then um, complete my doctorate program, with USC, I really look for a program that would build on the opportunity to work with others. And so um, currently right now, um, a, a point of inflection for inflection for uh, my career with USC and also in, in my current work is that um, now leading the community schools work has been able to pull on all my strengths as well as networking the partners being able to create and educational career so I think I'm looking forward to continuing to develop and then also share with others especially as um, I'm all going to add it to the bio but I'm also adjunct professor currently with um, Mount St. Mary's University so being able to then um, mold the current teachers that are going into the profession and help them when it comes to partnering and building uh, families as our community partners so uh, that is my background, and I'll turn it back over to y'all. Thanks. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Dr. Lopez. Um, Valencia, how about we have you go next? Sure. I'm sitting here taking notes from other panelists and learning from everyone. If you're wondering what I'm doing, I'm like, <laughs> but I'm so glad to be here. Um, how I got to Rossier. So I was an engineer that then went back to nursing school, and then I went back to understand family systems and was trying to figure out whether it was ed psych that I wanted to do or exactly what it was I wanted to do in education. I just knew that I wanted to give black and brown girls who are athletes the same kind of opportunities that I had. Um, I was blessed to have a coach. So that's why I was looking at the panelists and just sharing how important coaches are academically and athletically. I had a coach who told me to take the ACT when I was in the seventh grade. 
I didn't prep. I went in completely blind and was blessed to make a 26 at the age of 12. How that changed my life is at that point, you only need like 16 to go to college. So here I am and people are thinking I'm this whiz kid because I'm 12 and I'm a freshman. But in all honesty, what it did was it empowered my ability to look at STEM in a completely different way because I knew at that point that I would never have to pay for school. Um, many of the people in my community, sports was one of the only ways that they thought they would be able to attend college. And it was just a blessing for me as an athlete to know that even if I decided to never run track again, that my scores and my grades would be able to allow me to attend college for free. And when we talk about inflection points, that was one of my number one inflection points is the entire core of my being is to make sure that students, not just minority students, but all students understand that they can eradicate poverty for three generations by taking that test early and taking it and prepping strong. So for me, the EDD program at USC, it was a, it was a, for me, it was a uh, choice between Harvard and USC. So I had gone to Harvard, um, had gotten a scholarship for the um, Urban Summer Institute for Urban School Leaders. And I was the only test prep company invited to go. And I met Dr. Deborah Jill Sherman there. And she challenged me so. And she said, you know, you have all these bright ideas, but if you're not going to move forward and become a change agent, these ideas will mean absolutely nothing. So I said, okay, I'm going to go to Harvard. And then COVID happened. And I was like, you know, maybe the on-site program is not the best idea for me. And I didn't even know that there were options for online. So for me, the EDD program for OCL was a game changer, the ability to be able to stay in my own environment and to do the things like I'm doing now. There's a coach who's looking at me like, yeah, this is what we do. Like it's real life. We're really solving problems in practice. And I couldn't have had a better experience than I had at USC. So that was inflection point number one and two is helping student athletes realize that there's a difference between a student athlete and a scholar athlete and helping students to understand that they can leverage their scores to earn money, um, refund money actually by going to school. So that's me. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for sharing. I'm like getting the warm fuzzies from all of you. <laughs> I love it. Um, Dr. Buckner, uh, it's your turn. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, it's a privilege and it's an honor to be here tonight with you all. Uh, similar to uh, Valencia, I'm just soaking it all up. Uh, Dr. Lopez and, and Cole, just, just feeling all the energy and the love today. Um, so I've got two things that I, I want to share with you before I jump into to, to my journey. And those that know me know I like to, uh, to kind of use catchphrases. And I've got two catchphrases. If you've got a pen and paper, write it down. The first one is from gratitude to service, unleashing your purpose. And the second one is focus on your mission, not your position. And I share these two with you because it's, uh, it, it embodies my journey. And I'll, I'll tell a quick story. Going back to Indiana University, um, I come from an athletic family. And uh, I, I, I walked on to the men's basketball team at Indiana University. Um, I'm getting advised by my advisor. I didn't know, I didn't know much about advising at the time. Um, so I get my classes and just put a pin in that. I get my classes. Uh, I go home that night and I'm talking to my dad. And my dad is asking me how my day went. I said, oh, it went great. He's like, what did you do? And I go through the list of what I did. I said, oh, I went, I went to get my classes, uh, did this and that. And he said, wait, back up. You went to get your classes. What does that mean? I said, oh, I went to my athletic advisor and she gave me my classes. He said, what do you mean she gave you your classes? I, I, I say, she, she, gave them, she gave me them. He was like, well, what classes are you in? And I said, well, let me check, check my sheet. I'm giving my age now because I actually had a sheet. Um, so I go into my backpack and I check my sheet. And my dad, he already stopped me. He was like, you mean to tell me you don't know what classes you're in? And I said, no, I don't. And he said, well, pu pull out the piece of paper. So I pull out the piece of paper and I'm going through these classes. And he asked me just a, a, a question. He said, what, what majors does that go to? I said, I don't know. And he said, he asked me a, a, a critical question. He said, Who's, whose degree is this? Whose education is this? And a light bulb went off. 
I said, mine. He's like, well, you need to act like it then. And he's like, let me, let, let me do, let me do you a favor. I want you to go to your campus advisor tomorrow, the undergraduate exploratory major and ask your advisor what classes he's go to and come back to me. Long story short, I go, I go to, to my campus advisor and I give her my sheet and I say, hey, what, what major do, do, do these classes go to? She goes down the list and she says, these are all electives. Uh, this goes to no major. I said, oh, okay. And she was like, well, let, well, let me help you out and get you together. So she gets me right. And I learned, I learned a very important lesson that day. Um, and I, I, I understood my positionality and my privilege. My father gave me the keys. He was my first coach. And he gave me insight on t- into owning my, my agency, my self-authorship, if you will. Um, and so from that point on, I took my degree into my own hands. But what I didn't realize w- from that point was I was getting information from my dad about this. And as I was becoming empowered, I was going to all of my boys on the football and basketball team, and I'm asking them questions. Hey, what classes are you in? And they're giving me the same classes that I that I once said I didn't know have a clue about. And I said, no, 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 no. We're not going to do that. Let me help you get right. So what I realized is I was doing my mission long before I got paid to do it. And I had no idea that that, that was going to lead me to where I am um, on the journey. And I had no, no idea what I wanted to do. But what I realized is as I was empowering and informing myself, I had something to give away. And so I was using this... Um, intellectual capital, if you will, to empower all of my friends. Uh, and so I have a mentor in, in college, those that have, t- I know a lot in, uh, in, in the positive program who are here tonight, those that they know me. Um, my mentor at Indiana University was Dr. Sean Harper. Um, he took me under his wing at, as, I, as a 19 year old. I had really no idea what I wanted to do with my life. And he told me to take a class. Now, mind you, I'm in Indiana University, a predominantly white institution. Um, not many looked like me. This was the first professor that looked like me. He asked me to take a class called African American Males in Higher Education. That was the first class that had culturally relevant curriculum, and I felt seen. I felt heard. I felt validated, like I mattered, like I belonged. It changed the game for me. And from that course, I was able to own my voice. And I really wasn't wasn't a speaker at the time, and he knew that. And what he did in that class, we said, you know what? If you don't want to speak you can keep a journal. I'll collect the journal at the end at, at the end of the week. And so I would write in my journals. And he was the first person who said, "You had some amazing thoughts." He said, "I want you to share this with the class." And so as I was started to to own my voice, I felt empowered. I felt inspired. Um, as we move forward, fast forward, quick second. So we now finish the class, and 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 he says to me and my friends in the class, "Now what are you going to do with all this information?" And we're we're 19 years old. We're like, we don't know. He's like, "Why don't you start a student organization?" I said, oh, that's a cool idea. I said, but we don't know how to do that. He was like, well, guess what? I can be the advisor. I know how to do it. So this is an individual who was, he was the, he was the eyes. He was the sight before I knew the power of vision. He walked me down the path. And as I got involved on campus, my engagement went up. And we know Tinto's theories on retention and engaged student is a retained student. So now I'm, in, I'm engaged in everything because I'm getting involved and I realize I'm good at some things. I'm good at organizing. I'm good at bringing people together. He's like, so then Sean says, what are you going to do after this? I don't know. He said, maybe you should get a master's. In what? I have no idea. He was like, well, well you're good at, at, at these organizations. Why don't you look into higher ed and student affairs? So that's how I get involved in higher ed and student affairs. And I have no idea what I'm doing. And if I'm fa- going backtracking, I did not have my first two years in college because I was, I was disengaged. My grades were borderline. I was average. And as I, as I got to my, my junior and senior year, they go through the roof. But, but I, I have a 2-9. You need a 3-0 to get in. I tell Sean, I can't even get into the program. I, I need a 3. He said, no, I'm going to help you get in. I'm on the committee. I learned the power of somebody advocating for you before you know the power of your own voice. I get in, fast forward, I graduate, I walk across the stage, Sean hoods me and we share an embrace. I hug him and I say, thank you. And he says, don't thank me, just help somebody else. That 
has been my mission since 2006. So as I said before, from gratitude to service, unleashing your purpose, I live gratitude. That was my first in engagement into this field. I didn't know where I was going to end up in student affairs, but I knew I was going to live, live out my mission. I was going to focus on my mission, which was to inspire, to empower, and to remember, remind people of the power of their light so they can remind others of the of power of their light. That was my mission. And at every point in my career, I focused on that. And there was a point in my, the second inflection point, there was a point in my career when I, when I forgot that. And this was about eight years into my career. And in full transparency, in one of my roles, I got, I got demoted. And it was one of the eye-opening experiences, um, but it changed, it changed my life forever because this was a point in my time when I was chasing the promotion, I was chasing the title, I lost track of what mattered. And so what happened was in this demotion, I thought it was rejection and I'm a spiritual man. This was God's redirection. I took a, had to take a step back. I was focusing more on my job than I was on myself. So there was, there was a mission conflict. I wasn't pouring into myself. And from that, it impacted how I was pouring into my students. I'll never forget, I had a former student athlete that came back. He was in the NFL. And he said, at the time, I wasn't Dr. B, I was Corey. He said, Corey, you've been here for a while. You're inspiring all of us to go higher. Why are you still in the same place? And it, it was, I learned from my students all the time. And that was a great question. And it changed, it changed the game for me. And I started focusing on my own growth and that's what led me to go back to pursue my doctorate because I knew as, as, as my students who are on this panel now today, they know I always say you can't pour from an empty cup. I was pouring out. I didn't have enough in. I hadn't informed, empowered, and inspired myself enough so that I can take my students to the next level. So to wrap it up, those two points are what led me to understanding the, the power of my voice, my purpose, and uh, my mission. Thanks so much. I appreciate all of you sharing and just a great way to kick off our panel. So Bailey, uh, I will hand it over to you. Again, thank you for answering that first question. You all had such great point of views and we're thankful that you're here sharing your point of views with us. Um, to go into the second question, um, mentorship is important during graduate school and throughout one's career. Could you tell us a mentor or a supporter in your network who was key to your success? Specifically, how did you find them? And also how do you keep in touch with them now um, after graduation and into your professional life or as you're getting ready to graduate. Um, I know some of you touched on this before. Um, I think mentors are part of everyone's process. So you can kind of elaborate on that. And Brenda, if you wanted to start us off. Yeah, so uh, I can say the best thing about USC's program is that um, <clears throat> as everyone's telling their story, right? And like, Props to Dr. Buckner. Seriously, like we need to connect. So, uh, one of the things is that you're in a cohort with uh, with other working professionals that everyone is balancing so much going on in their lives. Like, uh, I remember in my group, uh, all our all the moms and parents connected because we didn't have time to play. Like, we had a lot of things to get done in a doctor program, especially when everyone was saying like. Uh, how are you doing this? Like you're, you're an educational leader, you're a parent, you're, you're on cohorts and committees. Like, how are you doing all this? Right. And so a lot of it was, um, we had the opportunity to be with like-minded individuals who were all about um, getting the work done. Right. And motivating each other. And that was the biggest thing. Like we were each other's cheerleaders, um, especially when it came to like the really hard parts where um, as we moved into like our dissertation and our cohorts, um, I remember the hardest part was I was in my dissertation group was only five. There was only five um, people selected and it was a, it was a really intense group where um, our dissertation chair was kind of like, well, I usually only take four, but I accepted one, you know, like kind of saying like, one of you is not supposed to be here. Um, but uh, we just kept cheering each other on and especially because I went into ed psych and so that was usually known so when Valencia was like do I want to do ed psych that was usually known as the, as the most like rigorous not to knock on anybody else but like ed psych was known as like ooh, like you really want to dedicate your time to that but I was for me it's more of a challenge so 
really our mentors in our group were each other. Like we were pushing each other. And then our professors, um, when they look, spoke about their life experiences and things that had happened, one of the, um, one of the professors um, who talked about their experience, I'm drawing a blank now, sorry, Escalante. Um, he talked about how he was, a prof- he was a principal when there was a crisis situation on his campus and he had to deal with media. And it was like really serious issues. And it's interesting now that I oversee in our department at Magnolia, the communications department. So when it comes to, uh, you know, drafting out our messaging, um, whether it has to do with something, you know, crisis related on our school sites or promoting, you know, um, uh, press releases when it comes to the, you know, just the community schools uh, grants that we were just awarded, like all of that experience comes into play. And I know with all of our professors, they're just like an email or a call away. Um, A lot of it has to do with just um, once we see it in practice, like we're like, yeah, we were literally talking about this in class. Um, So it was really exciting. But the way we stick together, so our cohort was about um, close to I want to say 25 members. I don't know the exact number, but what keeps us all close is like our ongoing um, experiences. So for example, um, one of our, one of our cohort members, um, he was a principal at um, uh, Dominguez Hills High School right there in Compton. And there was actually, um, sorry, in, in that area. And there was actually a fire at his school just last week, I think it was, and it was posted, but he was no longer the principal there, which we knew, but we still reached out to him and we're like, Hey, is everything okay? Do you need help? Um, and he was, he, um, he was like, Oh yeah. Like I just, I didn't even hear about this yet on the news. So we were ahead of like the news reaching out and seeing, you know, what was going on. So just things like that, um, that we keep each other connected. And then one of the things, like, you never know who's connected to who, right? Like the USC network, it's big. It really is. Like, you see people in the, in the um, because here's the thing, before, I'll, this is the last thing I'll say, but um, whenever people would go like this to me, I was like, I don't know what that means before when I had just been accepted. I know, I'm a nerd. I didn't know that. But it means fight on, right? Like fight on. And that's like literally what unifies us. So people will do that and it'd be like, yeah, yeah, I don't know what that means. And then when once I graduated, like in the program, I was like, so now when people do the fight on, like I'm like, hell yeah, fight on, because I literally fought to earn this degree. Like I proved it. And so I'm so proud of that now. That's right, Valencia. Because when we see it, we're like, we know what it means. Like as a Trojan, like for sure. So that's it. <laughs> Back to you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Brenda. I love the fight on. I think we can all put one of those up right now. Fight on. We're all fighting for our education here. <laughs> uh, moving on to Valencia. So I was, you know, I'm taking all these notes, but when I think about my mentors, so I, I put them in categories. So like there are mentors I have that cover me. Like if you think about clothing, I have mentors that are covering me as I'm moving professionally and personally. But then I have those mentors that like, I'm from the South, you know, they're, they're like grits to me. They're close to my heart, close to me. They make me who I am. And so um, one, like I, I made the list of all of those people, but like my grandmother was the first mentor I had. And I think that that was super important to me because she was a nurse pioneer and she started the nursing school for African-Americans in my hometown. She was a nurse for the Tuskegee Airmen at a time that, you know, nurses couldn't be nurses because there was segregation and all kinds of other things. But um, I think her mentorship taught me how to look for mentors. Um, And I think that that's a skill that young people really need to be taught because just because a person may be in your circle does not necessarily mean that they have the bandwidth to take you where you are going to go. They may see you in one snapshot of the motion picture of your life. And so when I think about that, um, I met Dr. James Comer by happenstance on a flight. I had no idea about the Comer School Development Program or the Yale Child Study Center. And it was crazy. Like we were sitting and he was talking to me and he said, "Um, well, tell me what you want to do with children. And I said, you know, I gave him the spill of what I thought I wanted to do. And he said, you absolutely do not want to go to Yale Medical School in psychiatry because you want to work with children before they're broken. Life-changing for me. Like when we were talking about it, it's like I kept saying, you know, like, like, do I really want to work with the children after they have diagnoses and things of that sort? So 
when I say how important it is to have people to cover you, you may not even understand all of the things that you want to do in your major. There may not even be a major in the program that you, you know, you think that fits. Like I made up my own major in college because of that. I knew what I wanted to do, but there wasn't one path to get me there. Um, I would say make sure that your inner and outer mentors, like the ones who are closest to you, are the people who can really keep you grounded on who you are. Like I, I appreciated what Corey said. Those mentors are the ones that even with all of your professional accolades, they can take you right back to your why, your how, and your what, like Simon Sinek. So my mentor for that would definitely be um, Dr. Patricia Alexander. Like I met her at Maryland and she was just like, when are you going to finish your doctorate? I was like, oh, I don't know. And so I sent her my graduation invitation and she was like, finally, took you long enough. But just keeping in touch with those people who knew, um, they knew your why before you became who you are now. But as far as my cohort, some of my cohort members are on here. Oh my God, I learned so much from the people in my cohort. So hi, Kim. Hi, um, Heather. And I see Tom just left. But I network with them constantly. You have to understand in this program, you are surrounded by experts. So don't have imposter syndrome. Reach out to the people who are in your cohort and say, you know, I really need help with this because they are thought leaders in their respective professions. Use their expertise. It has worked for me tremendously at USC. Thank you so much for all of that. I think I think you're completely right. You can't have one mentor. You can have them all. <laughs> so thank you. Um, moving on to Dr. Corey Buckner. Oh, I was already off off mute. Sorry about that. Um, now I, I've got it. I've got to echo of Valencia's sentiments. I I think that it's important to have. I like to call them um, my board of counsel. Um, and when thinking of, thinking about that, you you want to have that that team of individuals that um, that sees sees what 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 you truly what you truly want. And what I mean by that is, I think Valencia talked about those that understand your why. And I, and I I live by this saying, and it's that if they haven't climbed the mountain, they may not be able to give you directions. And what I mean by that is oftentimes you've got to know where you, where, where you want to go, but you also have to know those that can help you get there. I never forget my dad would always give me this saying. He was big on sayings and he would say, if you're the smartest one in your crew, you better find another crew. And I took it, I took it to heart because I wanted to, I knew that in order for me to to go higher and make a, make a higher impact that I had to grow and I had to be around people that have gone places that I that I, that I hadn't been, and so um, mentorship is, is is extremely important. And I think um, some things that I that I think about when what I'd like to share in thinking about um, mentorship. I think Valencia talked about it, but intentionality. You want to be intentional about those that you're that you're seeking out. I think in that intentionality, you have to have um, like I like to call radical curiosity, and asking a bunch of questions. Um, to those who have already who have already gone where you've gone, like I said, if they've climbed the mountain, they'll they'll be able to guide you. And it's like that old, old that old saying: "Closed mouths don't get fed." And so now it's it's your responsibility to ask the questions to those who can help you get to your proverbial um, mountain. And I would also say um, it's important to cultivate those relationships. And I'm 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 big on authentic authentic mentorship. And not every mentor is going to be one that you're going to talk to every day. And it's not one that you can that you can force. I mean, I'm big on I actually have unofficial mentors who don't even know they're my mentor. And what I mean by that, I've got podcasts, I've got audios, I've got books. I'm reading um, relentlessly to to emp empower and plant in my own garden. And so not just the mentors that I have physically, but those that have already gone down the path that I already envisioned for myself. So I think as I as I sit here with you all tonight, as you think about your mentors, they're going to be the mentors that you want to have one in, in your in your field of choice. But as Valencia talked about, you want to have one that knows you. You got to have somebody that knows exactly what you're after because it. I think there's a big difference between taking taking suggestions and taking orders. And sometimes you don't know the difference. 
And so those that really know what you're after, they're going to give you suggestions, but they're going to allow you to navigate your own journey. And so it's important for you to understand that you want to have someone that knows your why, that knows what you value, and is going to be able to hold you accountable uh, outside of your career because everything affects everything. So you may be chasing that job, but someone that knows what you're really after may be able to say, is this job going to take you to fulfilling your mission? Goes back to what I said earlier, focus on your mission, not your position. You got to have people that understand your mission. So that's what I'd have to say. Thank you, Dr. B. Definitely sharing your motivation with everyone. So thank you for that. <laughs> um, last up, Kawa, if you could share your response, please. Y'all are so inspiring. It's great. Um, I, I think for me, you know, I, I think mentorship is so powerful, you know, because it's, it's the driving force, I think, of, of um, our, our professional work. And I think that, you know, for me as a teacher, I feel like I'm a mentor every single day to my students. Right? I, I don't take my position lightly. And I think it's, it's really awesome to see students grow. But at the same time, I also need my own mentors. Um, I think one of my first professional mentors was the math department chair at my first school. I don't think I would have survived the teaching profession without him. And um, he was just so kind and nice to me. You know, those of you in the MAT program, uh, he was my tips coach. So the first two years of your teaching profession, um, you're assigned a coach. And um, he happened to be uh, the department chair as well. He was never judgmental toward me when I struggled in my first year. And I struggled a lot. <laughs> um, and so I, I really... Uh, thanked him a lot afterwards. I'm like, how did you just never give up on me and just always focus on the positive? And he's like, well, that's what I'm here to do. Um, and it's just so simple, but it's something that I've carried forward with me um, to mentor other people in my career. For me, being a leader is um, being in service to others, right? And that's like the, the motto I live by. And so as a leader every day, um, I try to to be in service um, in others to others as much as possible. You know, I have a lot of leadership positions, but I don't, you know, view them as like, oh, I'm this and that. I'm just like, I just want to help. <laughs> Whatever it is, I just want to help. And um, something that you know I've learned recently in the last semester is to just take a step back. <laughs> Mental health is also important to take care of yourself as well. Um, and something that I've been able to, you know, confide uh, in my mentors and my supporters has been like, it's okay to not be okay. And, um, you know, I took a class uh, last semester called Power in Politics and Organizations. Um, and I think the most important thing I learned from that class is there's no one way of creating that po uh, power within an organization and kind of navigating the politics of your situation. Um, but you know, authenticity and vulnerability are some of the most important things, right? The more you feel connected to somebody else, the more you're going to be willing to help them out. And it goes both ways, right? And so if you're willing to be vulnerable with other people, if you're willing to be your authentic self and show up every day, it's going to go such a long way. Um, and recently I took another class where uh, the professor challenged all of us. He said, you know, what are some of the great qualities that you have at home? that you're not bringing to work or school or your professional life with you, right? Bring those things. And what are the, some of the things that are in your professional life that you don't bring home with you that could really benefit you um, in your home life? And so I'm like, okay, what are all the things that I'm you know, compartmentalizing in two separate areas of my world and how can I bring those together? And that's something that has helped me um, become a better mentor for others as well and kind of keep myself grounded in my career. Thank you so much for that, Koa. I'm going to hand it over to Tamara. Thanks so much to our wonderful panelists. Uh, we're going to go ahead and wrap up our formal Q&A panel and move into the breakout rooms where we're hoping uh, you all will be able to have uh, a bit more in-depth conversations um, in smaller groups. 
And we're also going to, we went a little bit longer on the panel because you were having such a great discussion. So we're going to go ahead and shorten the breakout sessions just a little bit, um, probably to 10 minutes each um, instead of the 15 minutes. So that's just a slight change, but we didn't want to stop this amazing presentation early. Um, so Tom has assigned everyone to breakout rooms, and they're going to be staffed um, by a panelist and also a member of the RSOC board. Um, just to make sure that uh, we can assist with any logistical parts that might pop up during the breakout session. So once you arrive in the breakout rooms, panelists, you're welcome to kick off um, your conversation in whatever way that you'd like. And upon returning from this first round, we are going to be doing another gift card drawing. So hopefully we can keep everybody around just a little bit longer. So how are we ready to go with the breakout rooms? Yes, I have a breakout room set up. And like I said, we'll do about uh, 10 minutes. And uh, as okay. you all know, you'll see a little pop-up window uh, when there's about 60 uh, seconds left in the, in the breakout room to bring everyone back uh, to the main room. So we'll uh, we'll get them started here, open up the rooms and uh, enjoy um, the smaller group uh, conversations. Thank you. <laughs> 